Yeah, I'd be walking it? home from my girlfriend's. What? Okay. Monday yeah. morning, I'd be going home after a weekend of passion, and I'd walk along the canal from Hackney towards King's Cross, and I'd get out just at Filthies, which was up there, you know, up the hill from King's Cross. So I'd get out, walk past Filthies, be about nine o'clock Monday morning or whatever, and I'd give a shout up because Peter was living in the room above the pub. And if he was awake and about, he'd come down and let me in. And we'd have a pint to start the week. Start the week with a pint again, as we Peter Doherty and Jock Scott. What a start to the week. But I remember one morning, particularly, he'd let me in. I was on the stool. He was pouring the pint again, as. And uh, it was a wild looking pint, you know. I mean, Barman, that of the ways of pouring paint to Guinness, you might pour that much, then leave it, then come back to it, top it up, whatever. But Peter gave me this pint, and it was like 80% head and some Guinness <laughs> at the bottom. But he hadn't even noticed. Mm. He just gave me it, and I, I looked at the pint, I went, Peter, the pint is like 80% foam. And you go, oh, so, so, so. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. I just dropped a couple of tabs of acid about an hour ago. My judgment's a bit out. And this is like Monday morning, nine o'clock. You know, so he was already uh, pushing the limits of the envelope of outer space of his own mind, you know. Then, it wasn't as if he got into rock and roll and then became a reprobate. He was already that way. He was built that way. So that's how we got to know each other initially, these quiet chats and filthies. And then he said, I've got a band, come and see them. And they were playing in the East End, in one of those uh, pubs under the, the archways near Old Street. He was playing down there. I think it was, what was it called? Charlie's, Charlie Brown's. Oh, yeah, Charlie Wright's. Charlie in, in Bright's. Pit, pit, Charlie Wright in Pitfield Street. Mm. So I went down there to see them, and it was the most extraordinary carry-on you've ever seen. Because uh, it was a like a bar, club, dark inside, people drinking, stage set up. And the group came on, and I was about as far away from the stage as you could get. But I saw guitars and people appearing on stage, and lights changing slightly. And then there was a huge fuck out on the stage before a note had been played. Before a song had been sung. This guy with long hair had started shouting and bawling. And there was a big scene with this sort of hippy guy. Before they started, the band were brilliant. It was like seeing the Beatles or something. Was that, there wasn't when Scarborough Steve was in the band, was it? It wasn't. Um, I can't remember if Scarborough Steve was in it. I spoke to Carl afterwards. Who is the guy with the long hair? Wolfman! Oh, okay. I'm like, this is really uncool. Why are they letting an old fucking hippie up on the stage when they look the part, they look great, mm. they look like Hard Day's Nights, Beatles era, with leather jackets on? Right. This is a great image. Right. Why are they talking to this fucking hippie? Right. And that's what had happened. There'd been some argument which hadn't ended before they went on stage. And Wolfman was continuing the argument. Was he in the band or was he no, just... No, he was just fucking about. I think okay. he got flung out. Okay. But I was absolutely not out with the band. And although I've got connections in the music business that run to the highest level, it never occurred to me for a second I could get these guys a deal. Right. I just thought, well, they must have a deal. Look how fucking good they are. They uh -huh. must have a deal. They must uh -huh. have a manager. They must have all that taken care of. But none of it was taken care of at that time. They were running the group themselves. Uh-huh. And then, of course, James Endicott from Rock Trade discovered them. Yep. That made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. And on the strength of discovering the Libertines, 
for a rough trade. He got sent along one night. Go and have a look at this group. They keep warning up. On the strength of uh, signing them to rough trade, he ended up being given his own label by Sony. Okay. This is the guy who discovered the Libertines. We sign him. He found groups for us. He found new Beatles band. Great. Yeah. Tell me, uh, so, um, Shane, did Peter know Shane then at the time? Shane must have done if they, uh, from Philadelphia. That's where they would have met. Because Shane was in there, you know, every day. Usually. Late. And he, Shane would sometimes arrive at half ten. Imagine putting Peter in charge of a pub. And Shane's the main customer. <laughs> and me. Imagine. Yeah. Wow. So was this before the foundry, Peter doing the, the poetry at the foundry? About or? the same time, because I was DJing at the foundry on a Sunday evening. Yeah. Me and my girlfriend, Helen, used to DJ Sunday nights. Right. And because I knew Peter from Philfries, he used to come down just to hang out on a Sunday night. Okay. And listen to the tunes I was playing. And mm. there was a guy, an old guy, who used to get up and perform on a Sunday night in mm -hmm. the foundry mm -hmm. and he had like a zither he used to play a zither mm -hmm. and he was older than me that, like, was, that wasn't rabbi was it? no it wasn't rabbi okay mm -hmm. this guy was a good 10-15 years older than I was maybe mm -hmm. 20 mm -hmm. but I got chatting to him because I dug what he was into it was all his own material right and he was playing the zither and uh, I was Chatting away, you know, I like, you know, the beatniks and all that. He says, oh, I was a beatnik when they first started out. I used to live in the Beat Hotel in Paris. Right. Ginsberg lived next door. Yeah. It was always farting. It was all the health foods he ate. <laughs> they were on the pot. They used to smoke the weed. Mm -hmm. He had met Ginsberg in Paris at the Beat Hotel. Mm. This guy. Well... And there was Peter and me in London years later. It was passed on from that old guy to Peter. I just happened to be there DJing. And was this before you were with the Clash or? This was long after the Clash. The clash is all over. Right, right. Hang on, who is it? <laughs> 